Hey, what's up, everybody? Hammer Heart Metal Reviews here once again. Today, we are doing a brand new album review for you, and we're going to be talking about a debut album. The band is called Majesties with their album Vast Reaches Unclaimed, which releases this Friday, March 3rd, 2023. So like I said, this is a debut record. This band is from Minneapolis in Minnesota, down in the USA, and it features members from Obsequiae and Inexorum. So as soon as I saw that, that got me instantly excited because I am big fans of both of those bands. But that being said, those are the, both of those bands plays different styles than what this band does. This is some throwback melodic death metal very much inspired by the Gothenburg sound, that early to mid 90s style from Sweden that many bands like In Flames, At The Gates, Dark Tranquility made very famous back in the day. These days, I honestly don't listen to too much like modern melodic death metal. It just doesn't scratch that same itch for me, but I do still have a soft spot for that era of stuff. And this really is bringing back those vibes. This feels nostalgic when I listen to it, but at the same time, they add their own flavor. They bring in influences from each of their projects. Like, yeah, the vocalist, guitarist, the drummer is the dude from Obsequiae, and he brings in that, those atmospheres and the great lead work that's really on full display. If you ever thought, oh, what would the lead work from Obsequiae obsequia sound like in a melodic death metal album well you get to find out here and then the couple dudes that are in exorum that play in majesties they bring in such the glorious melodies as well with the riffs just really awesome this is a match made in heaven there is so much melody on display throughout here twin guitar harmonies and just great riffs the tortured vocals work really well. It's very reminiscent of like early at the gate style, but possibly even better. I think so. And this whole album just has a really like royal and majestic feeling. Maybe the, that's why their band is called Majesties, because it just evokes this majestic, melodic, triumphant feeling throughout. They really know how to incorporate these like tasty, catchy melodies interwoven into every single track here. Um, this album is 10 tracks. It's about 39 minutes. I should have mentioned it's being released through 20 Buck Spin, which is a great record label. And yeah, I'm just going to do a track by track run through and I'll give you my thoughts on this album as a whole and I'll score it out of 10 at the end. So the album kicks off with the first track in Yearning Alive. Definitely a great opening track to the album. It's got this brief like haunting intro before this melodic riff explosion hits you and it's got this great scream to kick it off. Instantly shows you the style of music that you're in store for over the course of the album. A really great twin harmonies in spots and overall it's just a very fast paced opener but it does have some changes in pace as well. It's got blast beats, it's got crunchy riffs and just so much underlying melody. Really awesome way to kick off the album. After that, the second track, The World Unseen, this has that really typical Gothenburg style riffing, really nice lead work after that as well. And once again, the guitar melodies just really shine here. It's got this catchy sing-alongable chorus and just awesome stuff, really great track. After that, the third track, Our Gracious Captors, glorious guitar work once again. I might be saying this a lot throughout this review, like the guitar work is so magnificent here. And it's even got a really gorgeous acoustic section to change things up at the very end of the track. Definitely a standout song here. The fourth one, another standout in my opinion, Verdant Paths to Radiance. The opening riff is so much inspired by Early In Flames. It almost sounds like it almost identical to an Early In Flames riff, but they switch it up a little bit, but it's really awesome stuff here. The solos and lead work absolutely kill here. It's got those obsequia style leads over top, but in this mellow death style, and it just works so well. It's just great stuff. After that, fifth track, Across the Neverwind. This has got aggressive tremolo riffing and double kicks, but it's still got that great sense of melody throughout as well. There's some more folky, melodic, like acoustic sections in spots as well. And like, this is how to do a Mellow Death album. We're halfway through this already. And man, like last month, I heard so many people online talking about, oh, how good the new In Flames album is. It's a throwback to their earlier sound. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Like maybe it's better than some of their more recent stuff, but it doesn't scratch that same itch as their early material. But this is how you do it here. Like don't listen to that album. Listen to this album if you want that throwback melodic death metal sound because this is way fucking better. Um, yeah, I'm getting off track here. But yeah, that's 
And we're halfway through the album. Let's go through the rest of the songs now. The sixth track, Seekers of the Ineffable. This one opens with ripping guitars. Just wow. Awesome, awesome stuff here. You will love the guitar work to kick off this song. The vocals are so aggressive here. And once again, the lead melodies are just gorgeous. Awesome track. Seventh song, Sidereal Spire. Another very headbangable song. Like this album is just not letting up. This is already seven songs in and it's just been great song after great song. No weak moments so far. Let's keep it going. See what the last three tracks have in store. The eighth one, Temporal Anchor. This one has a really melodic opening riff. Very typical Swedish mellow death sound style song. Once again, the lead work just brings it to another level, putting their own unique touches on it, where it's still going to remind you of Inexorm and remind you of Obsequie, but at the same time, through this different lens, through melodic death metal, and it just really works. The ninth song, City of Nine Gates. I really haven't talked about drums much on this album, but they're amazing throughout, and I feel like this is a good song to showcase what this guy can do behind the kit as well. It's got really great variation between blast beats, double kicks, just really nice fills and patterns as well. And like I said earlier, like it's the same dude doing lead vocals, guitar, and drumming, and that's amazing. The dude from Obsequie, he knows what he's doing. Awesome, awesome stuff. A really awesome song once again. Then it brings us to the closing track, Journey's End. This one's got a really nice slow build into this melodic crescendo to start off the song. And then it goes into some really beautiful leads over top of Blast Beats. It's a really nice touch. It sounds so unique and awesome. Really excellent closer here. And it fades out with another acoustic melody, a really nice touch to end it. So yeah, those are the 10 songs in total. If I had to pick favorites, I'd probably go with the opener in Yearning Alive, Our Gracious Captors, Verdant Paths to Radiance, and Seekers of the Ineffable. But honestly, there are no weak tracks here. From start to finish, this album is engaging. Like I said earlier, it's nostalgic. It brings me back to a different time when melodic death metal was actually still good. I don't want to say it's not good these days. There's obviously still exceptions to the rule. I don't want to just shit on all modern melodic ma uh, death metal. That's not accurate. There's some albums that I really do enjoy. But this one sounds like it could have just been plucked from the Swedish scene in the mid-90s and you wouldn't know the difference. So maybe I'll take some points off for maybe not being the most original or unique thing out there, but it's so well done and so well executed and they bring in enough of their own style that it's not just copycat. It's not just a tribute album to those earlier days. It's clear what they're going for. It's clearly what they're inspired by, but they do their own thing here and it works really well. I absolutely love this album to score it out of 10. If you have watched any of my reviews before on my scale, Anything that hits like 7.5 out of 10 and higher is something that I would recommend. If it reaches towards 8, that's a little bit stronger. If it reaches towards 9, that's next level stuff. So obviously, I've been talking pretty positively throughout this, not really too much negative. I am giving this a solid 8 out of 10. Only things holding it back from a higher score really are the lack of uniqueness, maybe, or originality, but don't want that to sound like a negative. This album absolutely kicks ass and deserves your attention. Go listen to it if you have not. If you have, give me your thoughts on it down below. Always like to get some conversations going, especially about a brand new band like this. Absolutely love this album. Go give it a listen. And until next time, Hamheart Metal Reviews.